Morning, Portland. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but the folks at Orion have been kind enough to let me continue with my keynote, albeit in a slightly abbreviated version, via video. So thank you for listening. Alan Turing. That's a name we should all be familiar with. Next year, in 2012, Alan Turing would have been 100 years old, but he died woefully early, aged only 41. He's the father of computer science, having described the Turing machine, the fundamental computer that underlies the machines we use today. He is known for the Turing test used to determine whether a machine can think, and his work during the Second World War breaking Nazi codes is celebrated at Bletchley Park. His life tells the story of a brilliant man, but his death tells the story of how prejudice snuffs out potential, and how discrimination hurts us all. His story is as relevant today as it was then, and it is relevant at this conference. Alan Turing was gay at a time when homosexuality was illegal in the UK. He was prosecuted and given the choice of prison or oestrogen injections. He chose the female hormones and grew breasts. Two years later, in 1954, he took his own life. Just imagine all that this brilliant man could have done with a few more years of life. He had already done so much in just 20 years of work. In 2009, I petitioned the UK government to apologise for the treatment of Alan Turing. To my surprise, over 32,000 people in the UK signed the petition, and on September the 10th of that year, then Prime Minister Gordon Brown called me at home to tell me that the apology text was being issued that night. I harnessed this great crowd of ordinary people and celebrities by myself. Using a mixture of Twitter and Facebook and old-fashioned press and television, the word spread quickly. I have written about how I achieved this on a rarely radar. The campaign grew slowly at first, as only a small number of people in the computer world who already knew about the Turing story signed. But a big break came when the independent newspaper wrote about the campaign, and shortly after Richard Dawkins lent his name. As Twitter amplified stories in the press more and more, people signed, until the BBC decided to cover the story, first on its website and then on television. With the weighty BBC story to tweet, the petition quickly grew and got the attention of Downing Street. The petition itself was all managed electronically through open source software created by the British non-profit My Society. With an open source petition platform, the British government has enabled direct electronic democracy. I originally planned to talk in detail about the apology campaign, but in recent days O'Reilly made an announcement that made me rethink this talk. Last Sunday, Tim O'Reilly announced that a code of conduct for all O'Reilly's conferences would be introduced covering sexual harassment and other inappropriate behaviour. That's wonderful, but as a community built on the ideas of openness, sharing and freedom, I think we can do much more. The prejudice that harmed Alan Turing may seem far from off-colour comments, offensive slideware, or unwanted advances. But all these things end up with the same result. Valuable people are discouraged from being part of the open source world. Open source has already changed the world. Let's continue being the change we want to see in the world, as Gandhi put it, by including everyone who wants to join us, regardless of who they are. Alan Turing and the other great minds at Bletchley Park were brought together because Winston Churchill ordered that no stone be left unturned in the search for the right talent. Whether Turing was gay, or another great mind was a woman, or of a particular religion was irrelevant. What mattered was ability. From this great diversity of people came great strength, and ultimately great progress. Let's honour Alan Turing not just with a code of conduct, but with our code, for he would surely be happy to see so much open software, and with our conduct. Thank you for listening. Have a great conference. I'm sorry I can't be there myself.